Moving on to the topic our minds are deeply troubled with, COVID-19 yet today from a digital perspective. I'm very curious to learn what message Bernardo Marino, Director Digital Health and Innovation and the Chief Information Officer at World Health Organization, WHO, in Geneva has for us. He is responsible for setting WHO's strategy of health in the digital age. Mr. Mariano, please share your views with us. Lessons to learn during the corona pandemic. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. And, it, and the, the pandemic is teaching us all a lesson in many fronts. Uh, but on, on the digital front, one of the lessons that uh, at the World Health Organization that we, we had to brace and survive this, this pandemic in addition to the, the epidemiological side was the, the infodemics, as I call it, we call it. Actually, we created a science called infodemics and we brought a number of scientists to discuss the infodemics, but within the infodemics, there is the whole cybersecurity element. We all know, and I think we have, we all read in many uh, media, both social media and mainstream media, the how how much healthcare organizations suffered from cybersecurity attacks. And we were not the, the exception. Uh, the World Health Organization. Uh, so a dramatic increase on per, of attacks to the organization itself on per digital assets, but also to the individuals in the organizations, so the, especially the 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 the, um, the leadership uh, and, and people that with influence in the organization. So there was a lot of that, and we have seen as well in whole healthcare sector, hospitals uh, suffered cyber cyber attacks I, as they fight. They were fighting the pandemic, which was not something that anyone expected when uh, before the pandemic. Nobody expected that uh, while we are fighting a global pandemic, we had to fight um, um, the cyber attacks in such an increasing way. But in addition to this increase of cyber attacks, what we saw as well was the the the. The, this blurred line between work environment, a protected environment at the workplace, and the extension of that workplace with the teleworking, which then required us to actually look at the office, not just from the perspective of bricks and mortar, like the building where people come and sit down in their offices, but the office became where people were sitting at their homes. And cybersecurity and security perspective was had to be extended to the to the to the to to the teleworking environment of 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 staff colleagues that are that are that are working in that in those environments. According to the Health Care Information Management System Society, they did a, they did a survey. The, the healthcare organization experienced this increase of incidents phishing attacks by 55, 57%. And in social engineering attacks by, uh, by, 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 by a number, I think of multiple folds. And phishing remains the top incident security. And at WHO, we had to extend that protection to ensure that, uh, that uh, even the private accounts, email accounts, social media accounts, of a number of WHO staff were protected to ensure that, uh, that the, 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 the penetration to WHO didn't take place through those, per, the, through those, through those social medias and private, private accounts. We had to shut down, shut down um, old systems, uh, legacy systems that were vulnerable to attacks. We had actually, uh, so we suffered impact on, on performance of some of the, the work and then the collaborations that we have with a number of universities during the pandemic, because some of the, our legacy systems had to really be shut down because they were compromised to, for, because of the cyber attacks. 
Luckily, before the pandemic, we had um, we, we had already a, 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 a cybersecurity roadmap, which we had planned to implement in four years. We had to implement th that the cybersecurity roadmap. We had to shrink, I mean, to accelerate the implementation, and and basically the plan of four years had to be implemented within one and a half year, but just to show that uh, that uh, the, that uh, the, while well, before we had a uh, of three three incidents a month, we started having three incidents a day of cybersecurity. So so that that increase required us to actually change the plan, accelerate the plan, and make, make sure that the, the systems remain uh, uh, protected. But work we couldn't do that alone, and that's the message that I bring here. Because the cybersecurity attacks or the cyber attacks do not happen because one individual is sitting down somewhere doing it alone. They work in a very coordinated fashion. They have groups, they learn from each other. They look at the vulnerabilities, pass on to others, and then exploit those vulnerabilities. So we had to also ensure that we, we work well coordinated with other entities and have to say a huge thank to at least six member states, six countries um, that helped us and from the cybersecurity perspective, giving us early warning alerts. We had three major companies, private companies that helped us giving us early warning alerts. And working, we had the pro bono uh, engagements to give us tools to ensure that we were ready to respond, to protect. The, the digital assets of the, of the World Health Organization. To say that, all this is to say that for us to address the cybersecurity in a comprehensive way, for us to, to ensure that we remain ahead of, the, of, the, of, the, of this, of this cyber, cyber war, we need to work better and well-coordinated, better than the cyber, than the hackers. We need to share experience, knowledge, ensure that what is what the private se sector knows about how it operates, how countries, cybersecurity entities are able to, to, to provide intelligence, this all to make sure, I mean, it has to be brought to the, to, 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 together to ensure that as a community, we protect what is important to us today, which is data. Data is perhaps the new gold in the new digital age. So it's, 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 if we think about the gold rush today, if you think of data where it's highly monetized, this is, this, this, is, this is where we need to make sure that efforts to protect, it's, it's, it pays off in, in terms of using it, looking at data as an asset. So the pandemic showed that increased um, uh, of, of attacks. It exposed the vulnerabilities. Um, it reminded us that per personal security, cybersecurity, and and professional cybersecurity, it's 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 very intertwined. So, four areas that we need to to work together. One is the governance. The other one is prevention. The third one is detection, and the fourth one, which is all equally important, is response and recovery. So WHO. We went through all these areas in terms of strengthening governance, strengthening prevention, making sure that we're able to ident identify and detect attacks as they happen. But most important is if it happens, we're able to respond and recover very quickly. So that 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 was the that's and the team to to support that has to be had to be increased substantially. And and the story I'm, I'm telling you about how we had to basically increase the response, accelerate the, the implementation of cybersecurity. I think it's the same story that you'll find in many healthcare um, entities, be hospital, be ministries of health, and others that are, are, were involved in addressing and fighting this pandemic where the COVID-19 became suddenly a target from, 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 many, from many hackers either to looking for data, looking for vaccines or data, or any type of data that they could, 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 they could sell or monetize or just compromise security. So 
in WHO, it's from this pandemic, and the lessons that we learn is that partnering with the computer emergency response team of countries is key, and we continue to do that. Partnering with the private sector is key, we continue to do that. Ensuring that we create, we have a detection mechanism, a, 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 a teams that are constantly look at the, what, what are the vulnerabilities inside the, the WHO is key. So the ethical hackers, we have, I mean, that's a, the other group I want to, to be very thankful for the ethical hackers. Some of them helped us to, to alert us of areas of exposure that the organization had and, and allowed us to take preventive measures. Of course, investment in, 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 in technology, tools, systems, training it was key because as my cybersecurity, um, the chief of my security officer says, he says that the most vulnerable element in the whole cybersecurity ecosystem are people. Because we people either use the weak passwords or share or click, click on links. And of course, the hackers try to leverage on this vulnerability of people that clicks on different links to, to, to actually ex to be able to access systems. To prevent that intense training and retraining is mandatory at, at, at the World Health Assembly. So, so, so within this governance mechanism and then the prevention elements, the, in addition to tools, processes, but people training is, oh, those, those are some of the areas that we, 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 we invested substantially to ensure that the experience we learned, the experience we had, the lessons we learned, and the investment we made puts us into the next level of, 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 of security protection of WHO, with where the data of a lot of member states sits in terms of data that they share with us to, 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 to provide to the whole world the situation of the pandemic in this case. But also where the data and the private data of this, the staff members is, is hosted by the organization, and as well as the data of the entities we interact with, be non-state actors such as universities, is sitting. So we we have the responsibility to protect, and to do that, we had to increase that investment, making sure that we build that collaboration. But the key word here is how can we, as a um, entities, be it private, public. Uh, or, 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 or academia, or even civil society, how can we ensure that we build systems and the, to, 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 to protect the asset, that the, 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 which is the data, which is into the in digital world, this is the gold in the, in the physical world. So how can we protect the, the data assets to, to ensure that, uh, that we, we, we do not so have that repeated again? Now, some measures that I want to just uh, give you to, 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 to dive into a bit more detail is that we, we, prior pandemic, we didn't have a security operating center, for instance. So we had to build that uh, during the pandemic and accelerate that. We, we, had, we, we had to include, in, in, ensure that uh, 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 we have a, a, a red team uh, and, and we have a threat intelligence solutions to alert us way uh, up front on, 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 put, on potential threats and, 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 and uh, uh, also other risks that, uh, that we, we, was, we, were, we, ran, we, we, had, we were exposed to. So this combination of people, trained people skills and processes, which includes governance and, and ways to alert each other, but also technology, where we the, the, the combination of these three areas, people, process, and technology, is what allowed us to, to move from the security cybersecurity stand we had prior to the pandemic, which was, I would say, very low, to uh, an acceptable level. Are we at the high, level where we want to be? No, we are not. We still have work to do, and we still need a lot more collaboration support from from a number of entities that are that are out there and we have to take the lessons of today 
to do better tomorrow. And that's where that collaboration, that collaboration that in partnership is key. So we are open to that partnership to ensure that uh, this digital transformation of health happens in a way that lives are not uh, the uh, lives are protected. So we want to build, bring that collaboration to make sure that uh, we all thank, have thank you, Bernardo. Thank you so much uh, for this wonderful talk and for the view from the World Health Organization. It's been a privilege to have you in the conference. And I would very much thank you for making yourself available on this very important perspective. Thank you for joining Bernardo. It's been a privilege to have you. Thank you. I look forward to that collaboration to make sure that we all remain protected from cybersecurity. Definitely. See you next February here in Munich in person thank again. You. That's what thank we all you. hope. Thank, thank you for joining. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.